Today is the day, today's the day that we're going to start putting tape on the helmets. So this is going to be a how-to of how I actually lay out my designs via tape and how I mask everything off. Um, I went ahead and removed all the tape from the uh, molding down here. Um, that way this tape's been on here for a while so I just went ahead and removed the bottom and then I'll tape it up as I go along before I paint. So we're going to start laying out these graphics now. If you have not watched the video before this one of how I designed all of my graphics, pretty much how I designed everything, um, go back and watch that video. Um, if you end up watching this one before that one, then it's just, you're going to be confused because we already laid out everything for this helmet. So if you just watch this, you're going to get the idea. But if you go watch the video before, it'll give you a better idea of what we're going with and how we got to this point right here. So, the uh, things that you're going to need when you are laying out your graphics, um, it's all depending on the size of the job, but we're, today we're doing this helmet, so this is all I need for this helmet, is we got various types of different tape, all the way from inch and a half, three quarter, down to the skinny fine line, and then some other fine line that I've got laying around. Um, this is what I use. I use the FBS fine lines. Um, the orange seems to be working really well for longevity. The green does well as well. Um, I know they got red, blue, all this other stuff. Every single color does something different. But to me, the orange um, does really, really well as far as keeping its uh, form for a very long time. Um, helps out when you're doing really big projects, big graphics, things like that, that you know are going to be taped up for a very long time. I've tried the red, I think it is, and the red is similar to this. I would say the red's a little bit better just because it is, um, when you start spraying this stuff, you've had tape on your, or on your surface for a very long time, you start spraying and it gets wet. The red does tend to hold a little bit better. I just don't have any on me. I've got the orange instead. And then the tape, and it's a USC. Um, this stuff is awesome. It's really thin. It's pretty much almost see-through. So when I lay these down and I get done doing my fine line taping and masking, and I can go to mask and I can lay this over top of it and I can see the orange through the purple. Um, now, FBS does make their own masking tape. I just don't have any. I used to have a lot. It's really super thin. And they made it that way for that reason is because you can lay it over top of fine line, different color of fine line, and you can see underneath of it. That way you can take your razor blade and you can cut where you need to cut. So you need your tape, obviously, since we're masking, and then you need a couple fresh razor blades. Um, this goes without saying. Um, a lot of people probably don't know this, but I'm going to tell you anyways. Um, Actually, probably a lot of you probably already do. If you're, if you're a painter, you already know this, but like I said, I'm going to tell you anyways. Uh, fresh razor blades are a must when you're wanting to cut on a surface. If you take a dull razor blade and you, you try to cut on a surface, you're going to be putting more pressure on the surface to cut it because it's not going to be fresh. Um, a lot of people think um, it's kind of backwards because they don't want a fresh razor blade being too sharp because they're going to apply pressure and they're afraid to cut the surface, but it's actually the opposite. You want a fresh razor blade, that way you don't have to press on it 
really, really hard in order to cut your tape. That way you do not cut through your surface, whether it's just base coat like this or if it's actually clear coated and sanded down, always have fresh razor blades. If you use a dull one, you're probably gonna make a mistake. You're probably gonna do knife marks in your, your paint job. And then you got a big issue when you start doing that because then you start opening up the paint. And then when you go to clear over top of it, it's gonna swell up and do a bunch of weird stuff on you. So always have a fresh razor blade. That way you can make nice clean cuts without putting a lot of pressure on everything. So those are the only things that I need to lay this stuff out right here. So I'm going to go and show you now. Um, I've already done the design. Like I said, go back and watch that video if you want to see how the design came to be. But I'm going to show you guys what the customer actually picked as far as the design that I'm following on this. So. I did about four or five different renderings of the same concept and the same colors. Um, I just changed it up a little bit and then he finally accepted one of those. So that is what we're going to be going with today. So I'm going to show you guys that. That way you guys understand and you guys can actually look at the reference that I'm going to be looking off of in order to do this. So here is the final, no, I wouldn't say it's the final form. Uh, but this is the drawing sketch that he accepted for his paint job on his helmet. Now, when I do these, I'm going to say this again. I've already said that multiple times in multiple videos. Um, when I sketch something out, I don't spend a lot of time trying to get everything perfect, proportioned, or anything like that. This is just to get ideas down because I know once I go from the computer to the actual surface that I'm doing, things are going to change just a little bit because you're working with that exact object that you're painting on on the computer screen. So it's a lot different having it in front of you and working on that surface than it is going to a computer and actually drawing it uh, because you're not working with all those curves. It's just a flat surface and things tend to go a little bit differently. So things will change a little bit, but this is ju the general concept that he um, wanted to do on his helmet. So I'm going to walk you through what I've done. Um, this right here is just that major body line that we followed. Um, got a graphic cut out inside of there kind of to make it, instead of just doing one full color, we got something that makes that helmet move. We want to make sure this thing looks like it's not standing still. So that's the idea with all this. And then we got the big yellow graphic inside of it. That's probably going to wrap around mostly to the back. And then it's going to be probably cut off by this... There's like a vent right here in the back of the helmet. It's probably going to stop right there and it's going to be razor sharp. And then we got this other big graphic behind it. And it kind of does some weird stuff behind this big graphic. So we got to extend these out and figure out what else we want this to do. We don't want to really have it stop behind this graphic because that just makes it look kind of silly to me. It makes it look unfinished. So we'll figure that out when we get there. And then we got this band, this orange band to follow the big band that goes around. And my idea with this is to make it kind of fat right here towards the side of the helmet and then make it skinny going towards the back. And then it's gonna wrap around. All this is gonna wrap around to the other side too. So we gotta do this twice. So we gotta do one side, then we gotta do the other side. But like this big band and this small band, everything's gonna wrap around the helmet and make it all proportioned. Um, so that is my idea with this is make it kind of fat right here and then make it skinny going back and then it'll go back to being fat on the other side. And then we got all of these little streaks, pretty much just, um, I'm going to call them like racing stripes, I guess, but some of them actually are going to continue on to the front of the helmet, kind of like a scratch. Um, if you ever seen those graphics where it looks like claw marks are ripping apart something, it's going to be like that, but just not jagged. They're going to be razor straight, and then they're going to have the point at the end of it. But that kind of what reminds me of this is like a Freddy Krueger claw coming in here and scraping that stuff away. So that is the idea with this. And then when we get on to the back of it, um, I'm going to add something onto the back of it. just ties everything together. But all these marks right here, these straight kind of curved lines... All these have to be proportioned just right. And we're going to make this band interweave out of all of these. I only did on one. Just kind of show them that I can do that on this. And then we'll we'll just make those all proportioned, set apart correctly by measuring everything. And then all these will pretty much go um, 
almost to the back. So we're gonna have a little bit of room in the back. I think I'm gonna put some, add a little bit something on it that he doesn't know that we're gonna be adding to it. Maybe it's a pinstripe design. Maybe it's something really cool just to tie everything off. Um, so this is the general idea, the general concept that we're going with. Um, and we're just gonna start laying this thing out. Now, since I have this pulled up here with all the colors, this is when you need to know um, what steps you need to take to pull something like this off, right? So it looks like a pretty simple concept, right? We got a lot of stuff going on, but it's not really too complicated. So this is where you need to know a little bit about your colors that you're using. Now, in the beginning, I've wanted to use all candy colors because candy on top of this white, this pearl white we got, would look really sharp and it'd be really loud. So what I'm thinking is, if we're gonna be using all candy colors on this, I am simply going to tape off every single thing. What I mean is everything on this is gonna get laid out. And then I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna cut where I need to cut in order to make all this stuff just one big piece. Because my thinking is, if I'm gonna use candies, orange is brighter than the yellow, right? So I need to spray everything yellow first. And that is because we are doing a blend. It's gonna look kind of like an airbrush graphic, kind of like a fadeaway. So I need to paint everything yellow first, tape everything off that needs to be orange, and go back in and spray the orange and just dust it in that way it fades around to the back of it and that is going to be the quickest fastest way to get this done and then after that we're going to go back in and i'm going to take this off once i have the orange on and then we're going to be putting that yellow back on top so and then the very very end obviously we got to pinstripe it but that's the very very end i might even clear coat it once just so we can bury all these lines it's not going to be too thick but Candies tend to build up a lot. They tend to be a thicker um, base to lay down. They're not really base, but it's, it's a KK is what I'm gonna be using. So they're, they're transparent um, concentrates. So they tend to be a little bit thick on the thicker end and you're gonna put like six to eight coats down to get them to fully cover. Now being on white, I think the yellow is gonna really cover really quick. And then the orange on top of the yellow is gonna cover fairly quickly is what I'm hoping. So I'm hoping that we don't have a lot of built up edges on here, um, but we'll get to that point if we need to. But that is my thinking. That way we can go ahead and just stripe over this without clearing it, but we'll we'll, we'll figure that out at the very end. That Once everything is laid out, untaped, we can look at it and actually see, do we need to clear it before we do the pinstripe or do we need to pinstripe it before we clear it? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the general concept. Um, now all this fading I've got done with my airbrush here on this on my computer software. Um, I'm gonna do all this with the paint gun. I'm not gonna do it with an airbrush um, because I need that same consistency. Consistency. I can't even say that word today. Um, all the way through it, and then we're gonna do not only blend it down from here up on the yellow part, but we're gonna blend it a little bit up here too. That way everything looks like it's flowing towards the back, like this thing is actually moving. So I think it came out really good. You guys let me know in the comments what you think. And we're gonna get to start taping this thing off. All right, back to the helmet now. So when I'm thinking about doing this, like I said, I'm gonna be doing everything at once, mapping and taping everything at once, and then spraying everything at once. So when I think about doing this, I think about what's going to take up the most first because that's what I want to do. So when I think about this design, it's going to be this graphic inside these two um, body lines right here. So that's the first thing I'm going to be doing to this. So with that, I'm going to be choosing probably the green um, until I run out. So I know this will withstand a lot. This is a little bit thinner, the yellow. Um, it's pretty transparent so it's easier to cut so i'm debating on using this too um, i might use this first because these are really they're not really sharp turns so using something like this would be a little bit better than fine line fine line 
you could use wherever, but it is a little bit more pain to actually tape up the fine line. And I want to save this for like the sharper turns and curves and edges and things like that. So um, this is like the only rule I have without ordering more. So I'm trying to keep it to where I don't run out of that stuff. So I'm going to be using these two first until I run out of tape. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and use this, this transparent orange yellow. Um, it's really good. Um, it sticks really, really well. So that's what I'm going to do first is we're going to tape this off. Um, my thinking is I'm going to tape it just as one strand all the way across. And then we're going to go back through and cut the, uh, designs out of it. Um, and lay all that stuff out with the, the finer line stuff. So we're going to start. I usually like to try to prop up my stuff. That way I'm not working so close to the ground. So we're going to be moving this helmet around a lot. That way we can keep going on it. So I'm going to first do the bottom. And I want to try to get on that edge of that helmet on that body line as good as I can. So one of the things you need to understand when you're doing something like this, um, you're trying to get everything proportionate, right? So the more relaxed, the more calm you are, the more patient with yourself you are, um, the better your results gonna be. If you're in a hurry and rushing it, you're probably gonna mess up somewhere. You're not gonna realize it until you put paint on it. So I always make sure you're calm uh, make sure you have everything you need, not rushing around, kind of just taking your time, relaxing. Taping is a lot of work, especially when you're creating something from nothing like we are here. But the more calm you are, um, the better, the more comfortable you are, the better your results going to be. And it's just like a chill time to hang out and just start creating stuff. Um, so don't get in a hurry. Take your time. And you'll definitely see a better result at the end. So, I got kind of shy of that body line. So I need to make sure when I do this, I hit on that edge almost perfectly. And I got to take in consideration this part is going to be the orange majority of it's going to be orange so it is going to get a pinstripe so with pinstriping you do have a little bit of room for error because that pinstripe is going to pretty much cover it and we're doing the cross hatching the sloppy cross hatch pinstriping um, so it's going to get covered a lot if you have any mistakes things like that so you do have a little bit of leeway when you when you're doing more of a like a hand pinstripe but if you're doing like a really skinny, clean pinstripe, then you really don't have much room for error. So you got to keep that in mind. And if you need to, like, you'll see me tape and readjust my tape. It's because I saw something that I did not like. So I'm just re pretty much redoing it. And you got many chances to get this right. But once you start putting paint on it, your chances have gone. Alright, that's a little bit better. That light was kind of blocking. You got this going a little bit sideways here. And what I'm simply doing is, I don't know if you guys can catch it on camera, but there is a little bit of a shadow being casted from this body line. Since we got the sun and the, the light pretty much coming from the top down, I am able to catch that shadow. And that is the line that you need to tape off of. So if you're picky like I am, you're going to be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, trying to get that shadow perfectly taped. I 
can see I fell a little bit short of that. So. Let's prop this up a little bit more. I've got a couple more rolls of tape here that I'm going to prop this up to be a little bit higher so I can see more at eye level. And this line is not perfectly straight across. It kind of curves as you can tell. You can kind of see it. You might think this might be a little crazy going this speed, but trust me, the more time you take on this, your your masking and your tape jobs are what's really important. It's not necessarily the paint, even though that's important too, on laying the, your paint out, making sure everything's nice and smooth, but you can't get to that nice, clean paint job until you get your tape right. So just moving the helmet around, just following that same body line, making sure everything is like I want it. Staying off strong and get this to be perfect. line out. It's nice and uniform all the way around. And I think that's a good good layout right there of that. Looks pretty even to me all the way around. I always look at it when I'm doing tape. Um, everything's got to be pretty much symmetrical from one side to the next so if you're doing a graphic that's going around the whole entire helmet, you always want to make sure the back of it, when you look at the back of this, you want to make sure it is uniform going from side to side. You want to take the middle point, and you almost want to measure it from side to side with your eyes. Now, you can get a little bit crazy, and you can get, like, true lures, where it's pretty much like a, uh, it's like a ruler, um, and it sticks, and you can tape it, and it curves, um, that way you get your, your side to side exactly perfect. It's just a little bit, it's a tool that you can pretty much buy to help you out with all your proportions. Now I just got a regular ruler that I use. So when we start getting to that point where we need to match side to side, I'll pull out that ruler and start measuring everything. So now that I got the bottom line gone, um, actually done. We're gonna be doing. I'm gonna pull this. I'm gonna pull this a little bit. Um, right there. Get that extra slack off. And then, since we got the bottom line, we're gonna go ahead and do the top. It's a 
the same thing, it's just opposite. There's a shadow being casted on that body line. We're just trying to capture that shadow. And then the body line kind of changes right there um, because it's got, like I said, it's got this vent in the back of it. So we're just gonna go. I'm thinking about. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna color all this. So all this is gonna get color on it. So we'll make sure your tape when you get in between these lines and start getting into body lines and gaps and things like that. You want to make sure your tape is nice and. It's not pulling, you're not pulling on it. It's laying nicely because what will happen, even though you got this taped off, paint will get underneath of there. Right along the edge, moving around here. The stand is moving on me. Same thing on this side, you want to make sure that um, you are getting that nice and snug in there because you don't want any accidents. See I messed up right there, it's a little bit over that body line so I need to go back. and fix it. Did it again. That body line kind of has a hump in it right there. So, I'm liking that. Kind of filling it to make sure that's where the line is. So. There we go. So we got that side done. It looks really good. I might have got over on that right there just a little bit. So we're gonna do is pull this up. Kind of lay it right there. It pretty much like this again. So that body line right here, I got right on top of it, so that's good. That body line pretty much lines up with the end of that molding down there that's got paint on it. It's like a straight on shot to this molding that's still on the helmet. It's like a straight on shot to that molding, so. Go back here, look at it again. Make sure everything's snug. Now another thing you could do when you start getting into like crevices and things like that that's actually not uh, flush with the, uh, with the surface, you can go in there and you can take a razor blade and you can kind of slice it and then put a piece of tape over it and actually get it to actually lay down better. I just usually take the, alt, the back side of the razor blade and I just go in there and press it. And I'll keep revisiting that until I go and actually spray paint on it. Just to make sure that it is 
what I want it to be and where it needs to be. So look at the back of it, making sure this is all uniform again. I like it. I can see a little bit of hump right here compared to this side. This this right here has a little hump. I mean, it's not really noticeable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my green. I'm gonna find out exactly where it starts to become a hump. And it's it's a very slight thing you gotta do. Like it's very, very slight. This stuff is pretty gnarly. It's a little bit thicker than the yellow. So, now I can go back and look at it again. That's much better. Just cutting that out just a little bit helps. So, now that we've got this laid out, that is the majority of that section right there, right? So now we need to go and start looking at how we're going to map these um, this design out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it on top of the tape to where, the, where these sections are. So once I get them laid out, I can just cut this away and I'll pull it out. But from here on forward, this is pretty much left up to you on how you want this thing to look. But I'm thinking I'm going to go, <clears throat> I'm pretty much going to follow this body line this this body line that ends right here where the the face shield is i'm going to follow this because once i get this part done i need a starting point for the other side so this will tell me where it's actually even so if i start here i'll be able to transfer to the other side really simply really easy and that th that's just one thing going with uh experience and how many times you've done this you always want to pick and choose your battles so the easier you make it on yourself the less work you got to do which is sometimes a good thing so this design we have here is pretty sharp. We want to make this edge pretty sharp. So I want to use this fine line to do so. Now that I look at it, And I'm going to do what we call boxing in, which I'm going to lay it. I'm not going to worry about where it stops and starts. I'm just going to box it in. Oops. Boxing it in, that's all I'm doing. Just boxing everything in. And then again, I'm going to choose the back of this half silk roll right here to be the ending point. I'm 
Boom. And then what I can do is I can go back in here, cut this out, cut these off, and it'll be perfect where I want to go. So. With a fresh blade, you don't have to press really hard. It'll cut it really, really easy. Don't need a lot of pressure. And just like that. It's literally that simple. That cleaned up and now I'm gonna do the same thing with the fine line so I'm gonna go horizontally and cut it and then you got that perfect sharp edge same thing up here So we're going to go this way. Perfect. And then down here, we're going to do the same. And I kind of left that left that there. And then we want to do the same thing on this. So, that is how you make it simple. You don't have to really go too crazy on it. It's just something that's easy, simple. And now I can transfer, pretty much do this on the other side the same way. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this portion up of it. We're going to do the back one. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick two areas where... I want to go so like back here I am looking at my reference as well so my reference shows that I've got the next one starting way back here maybe not that back far probably about right here so I want to pick I'm actually gonna move it forward just a little bit I'm gonna pick this corner right here And we're going to go right there. And then we're going to pick another one. And we're going to go... We're going to make it... I need to really measure this. Because I need to... This is where you're going to start needing to measure if you want it the same width as this. Or if you want to make it even wider. Or lengthwise, not wide, but lengthwise. You want to make it longer, or do you want to make it about the same? So I want to measure. So it's about, it's almost three inches. So if I get my ruler here, three inches. 
about right there. I know it's hard to it's hard to especially with the flat ruler. It's kind of hard to tell where three inches is. But it's roughly like right in this area right here. So what I'll do is I'm gonna get this white pencil, this chalk pencil I got. And I'm gonna measure it. I've got a smaller ruler that would look better for this, but it's out in the shop, so I'm just gonna use this this gigantic one right now. This is not, that one's not writing very well, so I'm going to grab another one. Let me grab my actual chart, chalk pencil here. I can't talk today for some reason, I don't know why. Don't know why. I'm just making a reference point to where three inches are is because I want to try to make it as close as that as possible. And you gotta you gotta also be aware of like keep in mind this part is going to get pinch ripe too. So if you're off just a little bit, nobody's ever gonna know. But as long as you're doing these steps and actually taking the time and measuring and marking where your stuff is, you're going to be just fine. It's when you start pretty much freeballing it and just doing whatever you want, that's when people start getting in a mess of things looking wonky and funky. So you got to take your time and actually do the right steps when they're needed. This one is about three quarters of an inch wide. So this is where it's gonna get a little bit of the same repetitive, repetitive. I can't even say that word either. We're gonna be doing the same thing over and over again you want everything to look the same and I'm gonna be doing this It's not showing up either. Alright, so went ahead and got the other side laid out. Pretty nice. So now I'm gonna explain to you guys because I did a little trick in order to transfer this over. There's many ways you can transfer it. You can measure everything. Um, if you guys remember me saying that when I did this side, um, I ended up trying to reference the lines and angles to places on the helmet that are replicated to the other side. So, with that in mind, what I did was, is I made my own pretty much stencil, a little template, if you will. All I did was get a piece of paper, laid it over the design on the other side, cut it out, flipped it over, that way it was 100% the same, and just laid it out taped around it, 
and this is the exact replication from the other side and then I just followed my lines measured a couple things went on my way literally took me probably maybe 10-15 minutes to lay this out if that and cut it um, so yeah there's little tricks here and there you can do in order to help you lay stuff out quicker um, that is one of them or you can do like a pounce pattern where you can actually pounce it and I'm actually trying to find my razor blade I had up oh, there it is because um, it's actually the next night I actually did this last night it's been sitting here and as you can see I got kind of carried away again off camera before I uh, called it a night I ended up doing the top graphic the way I wanted it so I'm liking that the way it is I now find something like this is a little bit curvy right here so it's always good I always tell people like I was gonna say my GoPro shut off again I don't know it keeps overheating and it just shuts off by itself so I gotta turn it back on but I was saying it's always good to um, kind of have a like a step away from what you're working on for a little bit especially if it's really um, it it acquires a lot of attention because you're going to notice things when you come back to it so it's always good you want to step away for a few minutes maybe a whole day if it's a big project or maybe you just can't get to it soon enough so the next time you come back could be a few minutes could be an hour or whatever um, just step away from it for a little bit come back to it because there's going to be certain things you're going to notice within what you're doing that are just going to stand out because you got a fresh mind and that's, you know, that's that goes for everything really, but when you're really laying stuff out like this, you want to you want to take your time and, you know, you want to really dissect everything. So having a fresh set of eyes, you can really notice your mistakes. Um, but yeah, this is the other orange pinstripe line that we're doing. Um, or not pinstripe line, but the other orange fade. That we're going to do back to yellow that has the green pinstripe so these are both are going to be done exactly the same so i just went ahead and did that um, and i did this very easily as well i didn't over complicate it um, you want to choose pick and choose your battles so i'm just going to walk you through how i did this as well because it literally took me less than 10 minutes to do it so when i was looking at my reference photo I had this spaced out, this top stripe spaced out more than what I have it on here. And I was thinking, I was like, when I have the helmet, it just didn't look right. So what I did was I just took my, um, I think this is an eighth inch. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. I think it's eighth inch. Um, I just pretty much measured, I, I laid it out above this line that I already got. So it gives me a perfect width for the tape. And then I laid the tape, the bottom, and then I measured and pretty much did the same thing on the top stripe. It just makes your life a lot easier. I made it to where the side angles are wider and then the back, it kind of gets skinnier and then it goes back to being wide. I think it, looks really cool really good and then it's going to continue on down here in the lip a lot of this lip is going to be hidden because there's a gasket that's going to go over this so that gasket is going to go right along this edge but i don't want to just stop it i want to make it look like it's continuing so that's what i did on both both sides here so not really worried about that right now we can always fix that later because it's going to get hidden I'm not really worried about all that until I start to final tape it up for paint. Um, so yeah, that was the easy way to explain how to cause yourself a little bit less grief and make it your life a lot easier on yourself. Um, 
unless you just want to be complicated and do it complicated you can but if you're doing stuff for people and you're you're charging by the hour you kind of want to you know minimize your work time and get it done as fast as you possibly can for the customer and that way you can move on to the next project but you also got to make sure it's right so that's one way you know tape might not be perfectly straight there are sometimes they laser cut these and sometimes they're not perfectly perfectly straight but it's going to give you the best measurement if you can use it that in that way so now we are going to move on to the last big graphic this last big graphic if you guys looked at the picture or have the picture handy from this early video and took a picture of it it goes from here and it kind of goes up to a spike kind of curves along this edge right here so a lot of this all this is going to get hidden up there's a, a black piece that sits in here and that's what the face shield pretty much snaps into so all this in here you're not going to see this this earpiece area that I'm going to call that it's where your ear pretty much sits um, so the way I think I'm going to do this is just by kind of you know my reference picture that I drew up I've got it sitting back to like maybe right here. oh it looks a bit it looks like it's sitting back to like right here where it's the beginning of this piece right here so now I need to figure out how far back I really want it to go because it's got to flow really well so instead of starting I thought about starting at the bottom and going up but I think I want to start up here because I want it to barely kiss over this square right here where this earpiece is and kind of right along this edge and then hook down so we're going to do that we're just going to lay out a simple curve do we really want it to hook i don't really know yet we can make this thing hook really hard or we can just make it pretty subtle but i only i almost want to mimic this this curve in this earpiece we just don't want to ride it all the way so i'll be testing this out here and there um to make sure we get this as awesome and perfect as we can that way it does not look weird I think I want it to hook more than that. So we're going to really make this thing hook. That don't look too bad to me. And there's that. So I'm going to step back, kind of look at it, and for me, personally, it's not as straight as I want it to be. I like that. I like how it just flows. Alright, I'm going to leave that for now unless I figure out something else that I don't like with it. So, I almost want to make it look like it is continuing down on the front of the helmet. That was my thought about this. So, when I was thinking about drawing this, one thing I noticed was this body line here for this vent. And if I was going to continue this on, it would end up writing this line right here. That was my thinking. Um, now, do I want to do that for sure? I'm not 100% positive. I think it would look good. 
from the front. So we might do that towards the end once we get all this laid out. So with that in mind, we're not going to make this a point. We're going to make it look like it's just wide enough to, to notice that it's going to continue on. If I can get this helmet to stay straight. I want to move it just a hair. Hopefully you guys can see this. I think I'm going to make it a little bit wider. So now we got to think we need to make this wider than normal because we got to we have an area inside this that's cut out. And then it's going to disappear somewhere within this helmet. Within the stripe, I've got it disappearing somewhere. step back look at it it kind of looks kind of funky to me I'm not really digging it Still not really digging it that much. I'm trying to think. I've got it really skinny right here on my my drawing that I have, and I'm trying to make it to where I can do that opening because we got this we got this stripe pretty much cutting over top of that opening. So some of this you're not gonna see because this stripe is gonna go over top of it. So we're gonna leave that right there for now. And this is this is the part where you gotta kind of tweak things in order for them to fit. So it's gonna take a little bit of imagination here. and this graphic goes over top so we're pretty much at that point of where this stuff is going to start getting a little bit complicated to you guys um, and if you're doing something like this you might be a little bit overwhelmed so I'm not cutting anything out just yet because when I get all this laid out that's what you want to do you want to get it all laid out first and then once you get it all laid out you look at your reference photo you, you drew and you want to cut out everything at once exactly how you're going to paint it so and i'll explain that when we get to it but right now is when the, it, everything's going to look like a gobbled mess just because it pretty much is <laughs> So, and one thing about tape, I haven't really said this in this video yet, but when you're doing and messing with fine line tape or any tape as far as I'm concerned, um, don't pull on it because it's going to stretch it. 
and then it's not going to last as long as what you think it would. And then you're going to come back to your project and it's just going to be a mess. So, just messing around with this bottom piece right here. Because eventually when we get all this done, anything inside this stripe is going to get cut out. Seems like a lot, I know, but that's just the way it's got to be. We got to cut everything out within this stripe. And then we got to reapply it down the road. If you want that clean look. So. I'm liking that. I think it's turning out well. We just need to figure out where this piece ends up at. So we're going to leave it like this and we're going to continue on doing our other side pieces. And I'm thinking making these pretty much just curve all the way around. Again, I'm trying to pick, trying to pick things out on the helmet to where I can line them up at. I kind of like that. And we're just going to make them go all the way down and end. I like that. So yeah. It's got a nice flow to it. Now we just need to fix this. Don't really like 
like that. That's better. I think it needs to be wider. I think I like that too. So we're gonna do all that. We're just gonna come back, make it kind of not really fat, but we're just gonna keep going with it. Take that off. I kind of like that. Um, now it shows me that this needs a little bit of work. So. Just a little bit more curve. I do like that. So what I find out now is that this piece is overworked. And what I mean by overworked is, you see that bump right there? I can't get that bump out of it. So I picked it up and reapplied it one too many times. So we pretty much need to replace this. Um, so in order to do that, a little bit of a trick is when you look at something like this we know we're painting the inside of this right like inside these are going to be yellow so when you have a issue like this kind of make it kind of point it to the direction where it needs to go away from where we're painting Take this. See, that is out of the way. That's fixed and done. So it looks like a mess, but visually, all this is going to get painted um, and possibly pinstriped. 
So we know these these negative spots are not going to get painted. So just direct your line somewhere away from the area that you're actually going to paint. So I kind of like the way that's going. What do you guys think? So now we're to the point of where we need to start putting in all the negative spots to where everything is going to get pretty much stay white. So in order I'm going to do that because I've got one kind of going up here right along this edge. So I'm just going to do it very easily. It's going to be really simple. I'm going to use the same width as this to make this bottom. Because all we're doing is essentially, essentially all you're doing is covering it up. So when you're covering it up, And boom, just like that, you have a space where you're going to keep this where this is at. Because this is going to be right where you need it. Because this is going to be yellow in here. This is going to be yellow on the outside. This is going to stay white. So pretty simple. You can make it as fat or as white as you want. Me, I'm just going to keep it simple. Because... Um, not really right here you're going to see it, but when we get up here with this negative space that's going to be up here, you're going to see this line going over top of it. And that's where we'll, we'll get things where it's a little bit complicated. But um, I can actually cut this. What I'll do is I'll just cut this. Kind of get it out of the way. Boom. And then Boom. Done. Pretty simple. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer all this stuff to the other side. And I'll pick you guys back up. And I'll let you see the other side when it's all laid out. As I was continuing on to transfer everything onto the other side of the helmet. Um, started to think about what I was doing. What I said beforehand on the video. About how masking everything off at once. Fine lining everything at once. Spraying everything at once. Since we're only doing two colors, um, I actually started looking at everything and it's going to be better off in this scenario for this design to go ahead and just not transfer everything and tape everything off at once. So kind of backtracking here, what I said earlier in the video about how you should just fine line everything, tape it all off cut your, your fine line tape out of the areas and then spray every color once. And then we could put the orange on because the orange is gonna go over top of the yellow. Um, so not really gonna do that anymore. So um, this happens not a lot, but a little bit when you're starting to, when you actually get your hands on some of these projects and you start laying out some of these graphics um, and you start to think as you're doing stuff you start things start to unravel a little bit about how you're actually going about doing it and your brain recognizes other ways and then it just makes it that much better it makes it a little bit easier um, to go ahead and just kind of switch gears and uh, do it a different way than what you were already planning to um, and it usually works out for the best but um, in the line of doing and in, in this kind of 
in this method of doing this stuff of the custom like the graphics and even when you're airbrushing or whatever um there's a lot of times where you're just you know you're sitting there plugging away and, and things just start to come to your head as you're doing it and then you know you kind of switch gears so um this is one of those times um so i want to explain kind of what i'm doing now and uh it's going to be a little bit more easier for you guys to understand it since it's going to be not as complicated so it'll be better for the video too to show you guys exactly because it's going to be exactly layer by layer instead of doing everything at once and kind of just jumbling it up um because i usually do it the other way on very big projects um and i know that the graphics are actually set in stone on this helmet the graphics are kind of you know up to my interpretation the customers already okayed it um, and then everything's get proportionalized. And then when you switch everything, like I said earlier, from the computer, from drawing to an actual surface, things start to change a little bit. So, um, everything's going to be changed for the better in the end. It's going to look a lot better. It's going to be flow a lot better. So doing it this way, it's going to, it's not only going to speed it up a little bit to where you guys can see a little bit of color before just taping and taping and taping because there is a lot of taping and fine line making sure everything's right and measuring everything this is kind of it'll throw in a little bit of color in there alongside of the tape and it kind of explain a little bit better for you so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what i am talking about and then we'll get to the next step so as you can see i went ahead and cut the fine line out of the areas where the orange is mainly going to be in these two areas these two big stripes um and I find it on this, what I was talking about is it's, I'm, I'm finding out it's going to be a little bit easier to just go ahead and do these two areas rather than mix it in with all the little stuff because they're so big and it's the only color that's going to be different on this rather than the yellow. So I would rather go ahead and do these two, do everything, finish them completely, unmask it and then go back in and mask, finish my fine lines on the other side as well. Uh, finish all the fine line work, and then you can actually see it come to life. Right now it's just a mess because there's so much fine line everywhere, but, um, and I'm gonna change a little bit of this up a little bit because once this is in color and I unmask it, I'm gonna see everything a lot clearer if that makes any sense, so. That's pretty much what I did, was just cut out all the fine line in the spots that we're gonna be spraying. I left them up here and down here to kind of mark where things are. So when I lift this tape up, these fine line is still gonna be there. Um, so we're still gonna have that um, positive image of where everything's gonna be placed. So just wanna show you guys, everything is masked off for these two areas. Obviously we're just gonna, you're not gonna see anything in here because of the the weather strip that goes along here gets glued in all the way along the front. It's gonna cover everything because it comes right to this edge. And then the earpiece for this comes right to this edge. So you, when you're doing this stuff, you always wanna finish through. Even though it's gonna get covered, finish it all the way through. Um, and then everything is gonna be locked in with all that stuff when it goes on with the helmet. So, it is now ready. What I'm gonna do next. That's oh. why so I need a helmet stand. <laughs> Not a big deal. Um, but yeah, this is the other side. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna run paper. I'll top the, the cover, all the other stuff up that is not gonna get painted. And then we're gonna lay out the yellow, let it dry. We're gonna do some cool stuff inside the orange. Then we're gonna lay the orange on. So it's gonna come together really quickly right now. So we're gonna get to taping this stuff off and we'll start to spray that yellow. So we're in the shop now. I've got everything on the helmet masked off. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like all masked off. I just pretty much ran some tape and paper around it just to mask off the areas. If you know anything about doing graphics or anything along with doing artwork on helmets, cars, whatever it is, you know there's a lot of taping involved. So you just wanna make sure 
everything is nice, tight, and snug. That way nothing is getting underneath onto your other colors. If you do that, you're gonna have a nightmare, so just take your time and do it. So just ignore all the mess in my shop. I've got a lot of stuff going on, um, a lot of projects going on. So like my, my where I paint is just got a bunch of junk, but we're not gonna be spraying a lot of color. It's just gonna be very little. So just don't worry about all the stuff in the background because we're not gonna be blasting a lot of paint. If you hear the noise, the compressor keeps going off with the dryer, but as you see, we got everything masked off. Um, usually right before I go and put paint on something, I'll tack it off real good. And when I'm tacking it off, I'll just make sure all the tape is down nice and snug before I put any paint on it. That way you don't have any issues. Um, because if like this piece right here keeps on lifting on me because it's got a, it's got a ridge right here. So once that gets wet, it might just keep coming up. So every time before I spray, I just make sure it's nice and snug. So, um, we're going to go ahead and mix up some color. I want to show you guys what I'm using as far as the yellow goes. The orange, we'll get in the orange later on. Um, but right now it's just the yellow. So this is what I'm using guys. So for the yellow, it's going to be lunar yellow. That's what it looks like. It's just a bright yellow. It's just a solid base. There's nothing in this. No pearls, no metallics, no nothing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this medium FX in there. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then we're gonna reduce it with some medium reducer. House of color, it's a two to one system. So it's pretty, really simple. You just find your two, line it up. And I'm gonna go up to the uh, number two because we have, I wanna mix enough of this paint up for the entire helmet of all the yellow. So um, since it's two to one, it's gonna give us roughly about six to seven ounces if we go to the two and that's going to be that should be plenty enough for this helmet this is a little bit thicker it's starting to get cold out here um especially like tonight we have um frost coming in is what they're saying for the you know past midnight and on it's gonna be frost so it's getting really cold so the paint's a little bit thicker don't worry about that it's not a big deal so we're gonna get some of this uh medium fx in there i'm honestly just gonna be playing around with this like i said i don't want a lot of it but i want a little bit of shimmer in there because if you put a lot of this in there it's gonna end up changing that yellow to a different color See what I mean? It's actually a silver. It's not like just a clear color. It's got a silver in it. So it's gonna change that a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my reducer in here. Bring it up a little bit past since we're gonna be adding a little bit of this in there. So before I do this, I've shook this up really, really good. So always shake your cans. Obviously I've got a mixing bank that I've got, um, but I wanna check through all of my stuff here um, just to see if there's something a little bit better to use. So like the Snow White, I know it's mostly clear. It's not really white. So I'm gonna open this up real quick and see what this looks like compared to that silver. So it's a little bit more white. I don't know if you guys can see that. So that might, might be a little bit better than that silver. I'm gonna go through here and look at what else I've got. I've got a coarse super silver, which might be kind of cool. That's like probably bright silver. Sterling silver pearl, which might be okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. Everything else has got a color to it and we don't want to switch the color of the yellow. Um, and I know I was going to say I was going to use all but candies on this, but since I have a bright yellow base, it's going to save me a lot of coverage time just doing it as a base rather than a, 
a, a candy yellow. If I was gonna do a candy yellow, I would use this lime gold, which is like a really bright yellow. Um, the, the yellow on this truck is actually that lime gold. So it's a really bright yellow out in the sun. So it's a really nice color. But I think I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna put a little bit of the silver in there because I like the idea of having a silver um, flake in it rather than just the pearl is not going to be as heavy as a, a it's not going to have it's pearls and flakes are a little bit different flakes a little bit heavier than pearls pearls are grounded up so they're really fine so it's not going to really do much besides change like when the light hits it um, it's going to have like a shimmer to it so I want something that's going to be a little bit more drastic. So, and how I do this, just get in here and shimmer that around for a little bit. Make sure it's nice and stirred up. You guys probably can't see that through the cup, but I'll show you once it's all fully stirred because well, since it's a little bit thicker, it's a little bit colder out. So that's pretty much the yellow that we're going to be doing. I'm gonna get a light out and I'm gonna put a light on it to see and test. Oh yeah, that's got a little bit of shimmer to it. I'm, I'm gonna pick you guys up here. I'm gonna show you. You see that little bit of shimmer in there? That means it's got a little bit of that in there. So it's gonna be awesome once it's, especially when it's out in the sun. It, you probably won't see it until it's out in the sun. It's gonna give that little bit of shimmer to it. Um, with those little, the medium flakes that are in this silver um, FX pack. So this is going to be perfect. So, and one thing, like if you guys haven't been watching me um, paint, I haven't really uploaded a lot of actually videos of me mixing color. But as I, you can see, I've got a full house of color bank, right? And I could just grab stuff off of here and just mix it up. But nine times out of 10, I'm gonna manipulate it. I don't wanna just grab a regular color and just pour it and paint it. I want, to, I want it to be one off, right? So I'm gonna start, you know, this is how I do it, is I make my own mixtures of everything. Um, and if I'm doing like a project, something like I know that's gonna be on the road or maybe it's gonna get scratched or anything like that um, to where I can actually remember what I did to that vehicle because once I paint it, they're pretty much gonna be coming back to me. So that's a little key tip for you guys is to make sure um, that when you do like custom colors and you start mixing your own custom colors to actually write everything down because once that vehicle leaves and you do more stuff you just you you forget and you know it can just just write everything down it'll save you a lot of time so i want to get this mixed up put in the gun and we're going to go in there and we're going to spray so before i start spraying i just want to go over this real quick with you so we've got it all masked off what I did was after I masked it off was I pretty much took a scotch bright to it. This base coat's been on here for a few months. Now House of Color is really good about you can actually let paint sit for a very long time um, and it should still adhere. The longest I've gone is a couple months, but this is kind of over that threshold if I know if it's gonna actually stick or not. So what I did was I just took a scotch bright to it and I just scotch brighted everywhere we're gonna put paint and I'll do that every time I go and put color on this thing, just to have that extra protection of insurance to know that this is gonna actually stick if I tape over it after we get done with it. So I did that and then we got it cleaned. When we went through and we tacked it off, we got our paint mixed up. I'm gonna turn the uh, booth exhaust on. So it's gonna get kinda loud in here. So I'm not gonna do any talking. You guys can just watch. The compressor's gonna kick on too. So we're gonna put a couple coats on this. Um, this might be, yellow tends to be a little bit transparent. Um, a lot of yellows are just made that way. They're really transparent, so it might take more coats than what you actually think. But in my head, I'm going to be counting 
because we're gonna use the same exact color when we do the other stuff. So we wanna make sure we keep track of all your coats and your coverage, and that way we can replicate it down the road. later we got it covered turns out obviously with any yellow or any highlight colors that are really bright you want a white base that's why it's going to cover a lot quicker and better than if you use a different base even like a light gray would work um, so that's just a trick with yellow is making sure there's a white base underneath of it that goes to, like I said, any, any color that's really like a highlighter color needs a white base under it. It's gonna bring it out quicker. Um, that way you don't have to keep there and pound on coats, on coats, on coats. But this House of Color Yellow does seem to cover pretty well every time I've used it. Um, but this is, I think I think this is my first time putting it on top of white. So it covered really extremely well. So just three, not really two heavy coats. Um, just do a little bit of light coats. The first coat obviously you want kind of light. Um, that way it could stick, especially if you got a lot of tape, that way it don't creep underneath of it. And it can actually just create that first bite. And once you get that first bite down, then you can put on medium wet coats. And uh, yeah, just make sure you're flashing it off every time. Um, this is probably pretty much almost dry to the touch now. It's been about 10 minutes. Um, it's a little bit colder out. So the next thing we're gonna do is the orange obviously, but I'm gonna be using a chemical to do some crazy effects within the orange. That way the yellow will still be brought out. So that's why we base this whole entire thing yellow because there's gonna be a little bit of cool trickery stuff that I'm gonna be doing with this. Um, I'm not gonna just spray or a cool, 
cool color orange over top of it. I'm gonna get some chemicals. I'm gonna do some pretty trick stuff to it. Um, so we need that base coat to dry um, fully, fully, fully dry. And with it being a little bit cooler, it's probably like 65, 66 out right now inside the shop. So I'm gonna let this thing sit for like probably two to three hours and it's already late tonight. So we're just gonna come back tomorrow and let it sit um, for more than that. And that way we don't have to worry about anything coming off or wiping anything off. Um, we can just pretty much do our thing and not have to worry about anything. So make sure your base is completely dry before you tape over it. You do anything you wanna put over top of it. Just make sure it's fully dry. That way you don't have to worry about problems about lifting or anything like that or anything crazy happening to you. So um, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it for right now as far as that yellow goes. Um, and then tomorrow I'll come back in. We'll do the cool custom um, orange and all the little custom effects and textures I'm gonna do inside of it. Um, just gonna make it look really, really cool. And then we can go on and make our other fine line graphics and then start taping all that stuff off once that's dry. So I will see you guys tomorrow. So we're back the next day. I've already got my orange mixed up. I'm gonna go over what I put in this. This is not a straight off the shelf color. This is something I concocted in a little bit um, with a little bit of, I used Eclipse Orange. That's mainly what I used. And then I put some a little bit of Ryan Max Silver in it. Um, and then I threw in some Super FX um, Coarse Metallic in there to make it sparkly and shimmer in the sun. And then I put a little bit of candy tangerine in it. Um, so that orange by itself is really bright, especially out in the sun. And he wanted more of a darker um, orange, almost like a burnt orange. Burnt orange by itself would not be a good contrasting color with this yellow. So I just concocted something that was something that's going to contrast this yellow really, really well. Um, and that's the main thing here is you want con contrasting colors. You, wanna, you don't want to take a color that's super bright and pick a color that's super, super dark like burnt oranges. So went ahead and made that up for him. So we are now ready to spray this. Everything is nice and dry on the helmet. I'll show you guys that real quick. And then I will walk you through what exactly I'm going to do as far as the, the special effects I was talking about earlier from last night. So it's pretty simple to pull off, but it gives it a really cool effect. So here's the helmet. It's all nice and dry. Came out really, really good. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm not gonna fully just base coat this whole thing out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start really, really light and I'm just gonna kinda like throw it back to the back because we don't wanna cover, we wanna kinda stop about right here where this body line is. So right here in the middle, we're not gonna get any orange in it hardly. And what I'm gonna do is kinda block that off with the effects that I'm gonna do. But we're just gonna kinda mist it and we're gonna get that gradient kind of uh, that fade going. Fades are pretty hard to do. Um, usually I like to tend to um, thin out my, my base coat towards the end and kind of give it a little bit more fade towards the back of it. And then I'll end up doing like um, a heavy pass up front and then fading it out towards the back. But this I'm just gonna kind of throw it and just kind of let it do its thing. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not. It's not really too complicated to do. It's just, you gotta get it through your head that you're not gonna fully base coat it um, like a normal paint job. You gotta kind of stop in a certain area. And then with the being graphics on both sides, you gotta kind of get them even to where we wanna keep this exposed with yellow. So that is the idea. So I'm gonna get everything ready and we're gonna jump back on here and get this thing spread. So what you're gonna need for this effect, it's pretty simple. Glass cleaner and some compound. Now I use CSI compound. It's a water-based cleaner or compound. That's really good because it's self-cleaning. Um, it's like a one-step thing. It's really awesome. So this is 
a little bit more on the artistic side of how we're going to do this. So it's pretty much just by what you want it to look like. So first thing I'll do, what I need to do first, is to really tack this off. Just to make sure you get all the stuff off of it from sitting around, things like that. So just kind of make sure it's nice and clean. And then we're going to take some of this compound and we're just going to have some fun with it. Get it to go here. If I can get it to there. Don't want to go too too crazy with it because we're just gonna keep it a little simple. Nothing nothing crazy. And then this glass cleaner, what we're gonna do is now I've got a special nozzle on this. This nozzle creates different types of spats. Can you see that on the floor, how it's, it's splatting out? So this is what I'm gonna use to cover the most of that right there in the middle. And we're just gonna kinda let it go and do its thing. And this is going to create something that's really, really unique. And we're just going to kind of slowly fade it. Because the more air pressure you use, the more it's going to move around that glass cleaner. So we're just going to kind of start here. Kind of get it covered. Like I said, just kind of fling it towards the back. Make sure you're somewhat even on both sides. Kind of liking how that's coming out. And you obviously want to do, you want to kind of keep it controlled as well as like your flash times. Cause the more air pressure you move or through your gun, um, the more you're going to move this stuff around. Obviously the compounds aren't going to move around as easily as the glass cleaner, but you want to kind of just Lower your air pressure a little bit and just kind of slowly build up what you got going on.
And then obviously towards the front here is where you're gonna get your full color. And you know, if you're doing any type of painting, make sure you're wearing a respirator. But since I am talking to you guys and doing this at the same time, I don't have any respirator on. So just keep that in mind as well. I'm liking all that looking pretty good from the back end and you're just gonna see how all this is gonna take shape once we peel it off it's gonna be really cool looking it's something you cannot really replicate because of how everything lays out but you obviously want to make sure your your colors dry and all this other stuff is dry uh, before you wipe anything off. So it does take a little bit of time of waiting around, making sure your stuff flashed off because you do not want to wipe this compound off when your base coat is wet because it's just going to make a mess. I'm just going around here and kind of hitting it where I think I need it to be a little bit more blended. But I, I think I like that. Yeah, I think I, think I like that right there. So we're going to leave this alone for a little bit. We're gonna come back in here and we'll wipe it off and see what we got. Got everything cleaned off, everything's dry. We can actually unmask the helmet and go to the next step. But first, I wanna show you guys the shots of what this looks like. It looks really, really super cool. It's a, it's a really unique technique that you can use to make your own masking. Um, I just gotta say with the compound, you just got to make sure to not let it sit for too long and don't let it sit for too, er, you know, too, don't want to wipe it off too soon because if your paint's wet, that compound's going to smear all over it and it might take your, your paint away. So I let this sit for roughly like 10, 15 minutes. Um, so it's solvent based coat. Obviously it's going to dry faster and you can't really do this with water based paints, especially if you're using um the glass cleaner it's just not going to work it's not going to be the same effect so you want to use solvents you want to make sure you time everything right for when you want to wipe off and the, the glass cleaner you don't have to really worry about anything you can let it sit on there and it will almost kind of just dissipate away but you do want to wipe it off because it is going to leave a little bit of residue from behind when it is fully dry but i'm going to show you guys what this looks like i think it came out really cool you're not going to get this effect any other way besides doing this. So there you guys have it. That is gonna be the end of this video. Make sure you stay tuned in for more progress on this helmet. We're gonna continue laying our fine line out for the rest of the design and doing this backwards. So we're gonna be doing yellow and then uh, orange at the very end. So the yellow is gonna be more dominant in the next video as mostly everything else is gonna be yellow with a little bit of orange in it. Um, and we're going to do the same technique throughout the entire helmet. And then we're going to clear coat it and then we'll pinstripe it. So stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe at the bottom to make, these, make sure these videos get recognized. 
and get out there because I think we're going to do some really cool stuff in the future. I'm always doing things like this. I want to film more. So the more these videos reach other people, the more I'm going to get excited and be able to push out more videos for you guys. So if you want to learn more cool stuff like this, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and comment down below if you want any more knowledge or if you if I miss something you want have questions to, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments. So I'll see you guys on the next one.